Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front, of, in front of you when you're working with me. Today is our lesson number 26. We are on page number 93. We're going to start with number 124. I can see, as you can see, the problem is already set up on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you. Then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to solve the problem yourself, pause the video, solve the problem, and then we'll compare your work against the work we do together, as we, uh, as we have been doing, as is the routine. Here we go. We are told that we have 5,000 students. We are told that out of that 5,000, X are taking music, Y are taking art, Z are taking both. The question simply is how many of, take, how many of them are taking neither. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? The question was, what we're looking for is how many of them are taking neither. I was going to draw the Venn diagram down here, but let's do it on the top. This is a question that will lend, nice, lend itself nicely to the usage of Venn diagram. So, here's our, here's our music, here's our art, this is a universal cell, and what we are interested, what the question was, how many of them are taking neither? That's what we are interested in. The number of people who are taking neither is going to go here in this corner. Let's call it N. This is what we are interested in. We are interested in finding out what N is equal to. We also know the total is 5,000. So here's the music. Here's the arts. We are told that uh, X are taking music. We are told that Y are taking arts. But we are also told that Z are taking both. Z number of students are taking both. As, as it stands, as it, as it stands, as it is drawn, as, as it is drawn, the Z number of people who are taking both, as it is drawn here, they are being counted twice. They are first being counted as number of people who are taking music, and the same number of people are being counted again as people who are taking arts. That won't do. In order to prevent double counting, we need to subtract z from this side and z from this side. In other words, x minus z are taking music only, y minus z are taking arts only, and z number of students are taking both. Now this quantity, this quantity, this quantity, and this quantity has to add up to 5000, because that's how many we have. Once we have the equation, we solve for n. Let's do it. So, x minus z, right here, plus z, plus y minus z plus n has to equal 5000 and we are interested in this guy let's see what we can do I see minus z and plus z let's create rid of that and what we end up is that x plus a y minus a z plus n equals 5000 we could continue here bottom if you, as long as you are able to see it. Therefore n, n would help to equal 5000 and then just bring everything to this side. Minus x, minus y and a plus z. This negative z when it moves to the other side becomes positive. There is your answer. The question was how many people are taking neither? The answer is 5000 minus x. minus y and a plus z. 125. In 125 we are told that uh, we have a meeting. And we are told that in a meeting, in a meeting, each attendee 
is either a stockholder, let's call it S, or an employee, let's call it E, or both. So the meeting is being attended by a number of people made out of stockholders and the people who work for the company. And of course, there's nothing in there to prevent a guy who's working for the company to actually own the stock in the firm. Or even more shocking, a girl. Let's see what the question is asking. Here's the question. The question is, what percentage what percentage I haven't given you the whole problem yet we are told that 62% of attendees are stockholders 47% of the attendees we are told are employees and the question is this What percentage of stockholders are not employees? That's what we have to answer. What percentage of stockholders are not employees? I forgot that I had not set up the whole problem because I was too busy being a funny man. So here we go. In a meeting, each attendee we are told, I'm just making sure I wrote everything correctly, is either a stockholder, employee or both. 62% of the attendees are stockholders, we are told. 47% of the attendees, we are told, are employers. The question is, what percentage of the stockholders are not employees? Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. The very first thing we need to do is figure out what this adds up to. That's a 9, that's 109%. What does it tell us? 109% tells us that there are 9% of people who are who are both both employee and stockholders, which is why they are being double counted, which is why it adds up to 109%. There we go. There are 9% of people who are both employee and the stockholders. Let's do it on the top. This is another problem that will lend itself nicely to a Venn diagram. Venn diagrams makes life very simple. So let's do it. So here's our stockholders. Here's our employers. We already found out that 9% has to be both. Well, let's not put 9% yet. It's too early for that. We are told that 62% of the attendees are stockholders. 62%. We are also told that 47% of people are employees. And now we found out that 9% of them are both because it adds up to 109%. It is now that you put 9%. Putting 9 from the very beginning would have been quite stupid. Since this 9% of this 9, let's, st let's stop talking in terms of percentage, okay? Let's just pretend there are 100 people att attending the meeting. So we don't have to keep repeating the bloody per percent every two seconds. There are 100 people attending the meeting. And since these nine people have been counted twice, first as a stockholder, then as the employees, that won't do it. We need to, to, to prevent double counting. We need to take away nine from this guy, which will make it 53, I believe. Take away nine from this guy, and that will make it uh, seven would have been exactly 17, that's eight, 38. 38 and 57. Oh, I think we're done, that's it. We're done actually. I thought we had a lot more to do. There is the answer. What percentage of what percentage of the stockholders are not employees? Right here. 53. If there are 100 people in the in the in the meeting, 53 up 53 of those 100 people are people who happen to own a stock, but they are not employees. Because they don't fall in the overlap portion. They don't fall in this portion. 53 percent. Let's do the next one. 126. I thought there was going to be a lot more to it. I didn't realize that we have we had arrived at the punchline. 
126. In 126, we are told that we are dealing with three accounts, payroll, taxes, and insurance, and insurance. Here is the amount, here was the amount that was budgeted, and here is the amount that we actually spent. What we budgeted and what we actually spend are not necessarily the same figures. So this is how much it was budgeted, $110, $40, and $2,500. For insurance. What we, what we actually did end up spending were these amounts, $117, $42, and $2,340. And here's the question. It says, for which account or accounts, for which account or accounts did amount differ, did the amount differ by more than 6%. That's it. If you like, because, because of the fact that it says for which account or accounts, if you like, I'm going to very quickly read the answers to you. It says payroll only, taxes only, insurance only, payroll and insurance, and payroll uh, and taxes and insurance. So, Payroll, taxes, insurance. Payroll, taxes, insurance. And the other two possibilities are payroll and insurance. Payroll and insurance. And taxes and insurance. Taxes and insurance. Those are your five choices. Go ahead, pause the video. I'm going to get out of frame and pause the video and do it yourself. Can we do here? Notice I left a lot of room here in the middle that was by design, that was not an accident because this is where we're going to do the work. First thing we need to understand, first thing we need to understand the most, first thing we need to understand is what is the most important word in this question? One word, most important one word in this question. That one word to make your life easier, I actually gave it to you in capital letter. It says which accounts, did, for which account did the amount differ by more than 6%? But let's understand this meaning, meaning of the word differ. Let me give you a, a simple example. Okay, a hundred, uh, a ninety-four, and a ninety-six. Which of, which of these two amounts, which of these two amounts differ by 6 compared to this guy? Compared to this guy, this is our point of reference, which of these two amounts differ by 6? Not 6 percentage, here I'm asking about per absolute value, by 6. The answer is both of them. This one differs by 6, even though it is going lower, and this one differs by 6. It's going higher. But that's the point here, it could go either way. As long as what we anticipated to spend and what we actually did spend, as long as that difference is more than 6%, Either we spend more or less, it doesn't matter. As long as that difference is more than 6%, it works, it qualifies. Because the question is, for which account did the amounts differ by 6%? Let's find out, shall we? Or rather, to be more than 6%. Let's start the process, shall we? So, instead of making your life complicated, instead of making our life complicated and trying to figure out, one way is to figure out 117 is what percentage of 110 and see if it's more than... 6% or less than 6%, that's one way. Other way is to simply figure out the 6% of this guy. 
110, 110, of course 1%, I, sh I shouldn't have to do all of this thing, this is too babyish, 1% of, 1 of 110 is 1.6, therefore 6% would have to be 6.6. 6.6 .6 would be the 6%, let's put down here 6%, would be 6.6. Instead of 6.6, .6, this guy went up to 7. We're not exactly, we're not interested in knowing exactly what percentage it went up by, we really don't care about that. All we want to know is, all we want to understand and all we want to realize is that this 117, whatever it is, whatever the percentage increase is, that percentage increase is more than 6% because 6% would have brought us to 116.6. 6.6 .6 right here, 110, 1% is 1.1, so 6% would have brought us to 6.6. .6. It would have gone from 110 to 116.6, we are at 117. So whatever the hell the percentage increase is, it's more than 6%. This guy works. I erased the answer choice hit, but now you know that any answer white that doesn't have a pair all would not work. Let's do the next one here. Same thing, 6% of 40. Just do 6 times 12. 6 times, 6 times 4 is 24, which means 6% is 2.4. 6% of 40 is 2.4. And we only went up by 2. Instead of 2.4, we only went up by 2. It should have gone by at least 2.4. It did not. This, 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 this does not work. This guy does not work. That did work. So the correct answer, whatever it is, cannot have taxes in it. Let's do the last one. Same exact thing. We're going to do the exact same way as we did before. Uh, let's find out 6% of 2,500. It's very easy to see. Look, if 2,500, if you want 1%, you just drop the two zeros. Therefore, 6% would be 150. 150 is 6%. And remember, it can go either way. In other words, it can go from 2,500 to 2,650 or 2,350. Oh, this one actually went even more. Had it gone, had it gone from 2,500 to 2,350, that would have been exactly 6% change. The fact that it went to 2,360, we have a drop of more than 6%. How much more, we don't care, but it is a difference of more than 6%. There we go, that's your answer. This is more than 6% because instead of going by 6.6, .6, it went, went, by, went up by 7. This is a difference of 6% because instead of going down by 150, it went down by 160. There we go, the answer is payroll and insurance. Payroll and insurance. Let's do number 127, the very last one on that page. See what it has to say. The next one is also dealing with percentages. 127. It says the greatest percentage change from one day from one day to next here are the days one two three four five and six And here are the numbers, the values, 20, 12, 18, 10, 16, and 8. It's a very straightforward, very simple percentage problem. There is nothing to it. They just want to see if you can figure out the percentages very quickly. And that's all it is. Do it yourself, post the video, figure it out. From which day to which day did it go? Is is the greatest percentage change from day one to day two, or day three to day four, or day five to day six? But it has to be from one to the next. We cannot talk about one, from day one to day five, obviously. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? If we compare day one to day two, there's a drop of eight. 
And when we find out, when we want to find out the percentage change, we always take the change. And what is our point of reference? Our point of reference is always the starting number, not the ending number. Our point of reference is always the starting number. What did we start out with? It changed by 8. From 20 to 12, it changed by 8. The question is, compared to what? Compared to what we were, which is 20. Which is same as 4 out of 10, which means this was a 40% change. Let's do the next one. From 12 to 18, that's a difference of 6. It went up by 6. Compared to what? Compared to what we started out with, which is 12. 6 out of 12 is a 50% change. It's a 50% change. And since we are looking for the greatest percentage change, that guy is already gone. The greatest change was not from day 1 to day 2. Let's carry on. If we, as we go from day number 3 to day number 4, we have a change of 8. We have a change of 8 compared to what? You see, from 8, 18 to 10, that's a drop of 8 compared to what? Compared to 18, which is same as 4 over 9. 4 over 9, and this is where we have to pause a little bit. I'm going to do it on top here. There are some basic things, as I've told you in the past many, many times. Today is our, our 25th meeting. There are basic arithmetic concepts that you have to know by heart, they must, you, that you must have at your fingertips. For example, nobody should have to, ex have to come in the exam and tell you that one half is 50%. Similarly, there are other concepts which are slightly uh, higher level, but you should know them. For example, here we're dealing with 4 9 you should know by heart that 1 9th is approximately 11%. If you were to divide 1 by 9, what you will get is 0 0.1111111111, it just carries on, but it just never ends. Which tells us that 1 9th is approximately 11%. Similarly, and if you don't trust me, do it out yourself. Do it out longhand, you find out for yourself. If you were to divide 1 by 11, if you were to divide 1 by 11, what you will find is, Point zero nine zero nine zero nine zero nine. It just, just go on forever. In other words, one eleventh in the exam. If you have to figure out in a hurry, what is the approximate percentage change? How much is the approximate percentage? One out of eleven. The answer is about nine percent. Nine point zero nine percent, if you like. But nine percent is good enough in the exam. Here we have four ninth. We know one ninth is eleven percent. Therefore, four nine is approximately forty four percent. We could have saved ourselves a lot of time had we known this thing ahead of time. This is about 44%. This was already 50%. Obviously, this is not the greatest uh, percentage change. Let's carry on. From day 4 to day 5, that's a, that's a change of 6. That's a change of 6. Out of how many? Compared to what? Compared to 10. Compared to 10. Right here. This guy right here. That's a 60%, which means it rules out 50. Let's do the last one. This is very easy. From 16 to 8 is a drop of 50%. It's a drop of 50% because it was cut in half. That's a 50%. We already found 60%. So the answer is this one right here, this guy, from day 4 to day 5. The greatest percentage change from one day to the next was from day 2 to day 5. That's when uh, the shipment went down by 60%. That was question number 100. Well, not shipment rather, but the computer assembled. Uh, that was question number 127. That was the very last problem on the page number 93. And we'll call it a day. We'll meet again tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.